we just need a little bit of continuity uh, with the price of silver to continue going. And I think um, every time uh, silver has a great day, my phone's ringing and the, the bankers are calling, the investors are calling. Uh, so it's very reactionary. So we just got to keep building in the background, keep building, keep building. But you're right. Um, they haven't put two and two together with what we have here at Hurricane, especially with that uh, copper nickel, you know, um, um, project that we're working on. The Financial Survival Network. Now more than ever. The Financial Survival Network. And welcome. This is Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz, and we are getting a sponsor update, much awaited on Tier 1 Silver. With us is CEO President Peter Dembicki and Senior VP of Exploration, Christian Rios. And gentlemen, we're really excited to have you back. Understand, uh, got some news, uh, Peter, some channel samplings have come in that uh, further underpin the exploration thesis for the hurricane project. Uh, can you just fill us in a little bit and then we'll go to you, Christian, and get the get the actual geological significance of the results yeah thanks carrie thanks for having us uh so again hurricane silver uh is a project that we acquired in fall of 2021 and we acquired it for uh for the most reason was this area called magdalena which hosted a lot of uh historical silver grades via channel samples rock samples uh that was reportable the stuff that we couldn't report you know and still can't is some of the artisanal mining that had occurred there years ago that, you know, adits that go down two, 300 meters into the ground. And someone at some point was mining some really high grade silver. And, you know, the historical channel samples that we got started with were, you know, kilo plus and, and rock samples that match that. So we wanted to get in there and, and, and see what we could find ourselves. Uh, so if you recall, I would say about a year ago, we had a, a brief window when we just got social access to Magdalena, we sent out a team of geologists to do a quick, three-week reconnaissance and sure enough they doubled down on those resources and and, and came back and and uh came up with similar you know plus kilo results economic grade uh but these latest channel sample results really have um have expanded this this project so now now we can see that we have you know at least four kilometers of of strike to go after in this area we know because of some of the artisanal uh, work that the it goes down to depth, you know, at least 200 meters. So uh, it's becoming a really going concern for for what we originally went to Hurricane for was was these silver grades, and have since been quite distracted with what we found up at Nanahuayco and San Cipriano with those incredible copper nickel base metal uh, numbers that we have. So uh, really intriguing that that Magdalena has really progressed like this. Hey, Christian, so what do you think the significance of these uh, channel samples is? in so far as giving us a fuller picture of the project and where you see it heading. Yeah, yeah, sure, Kerry. Yeah, in this, in Hurricane District, we, we have 13 targets, Magdalena, the epithermal structures. Yeah, what is important is that we have four kilometers in length at the moment because it's covered 60%, so this structure can grow. We can see different addicts, so we have 200, at, at minimum, 200 meters vertical, but this type of deposits can go more than hundred meters. So that's very important in the vertical. So we, we made more than 40 channel samples. We have more from a meter structure with to se up to seven meters in case we have one more than one kilo silver, but we also are looking at lead, zinc, and copper. That's in the structures. But in the area also we have anomalies in tungsten, anomalies in nickel, anomalies in copper, anomalies in rhenium and scandium that that's in Peru, that means we are close to an intrusive center, uh, an intrusive body. So that's very important. And we, we can find there because also the tectonics is very interesting in the area. We can find then a, a, there is a source that needs to be found. And the meaning of this is that it's open, laterally in these structures, vertically in these structures. And also we have an intrusion related system that is mineralizing all this area. So. Insofar as your prior experience, and obviously this is why you were brought onto the team, a uh, record of success uh, compared to the other projects, the other silver projects you've uh, you've been instrumental in uh, developing. How does this compare? Well, this is a multi-commodity place, 30,000 hectares, 13 targets. And what is interesting is that besides the structures, 
we have, as Peter mentioned, in the northern part, Ñañuay con San Cipriano, that is magmatic sulfide deposits, different type of deposits, and multi-commodity. That's very unusual in Peru. And also to have 13 targets and to only be the first uh, copper nickel district in Peru, that's very important besides the potential in these structures. And 60% is covered, so the potential is open. So that's very important. It's very unusual in Peru, the multi-commodity and the potential that, that is open in these 30,000 hectares. Yeah. So, so, Peter, the concept of the copper nickel deposit, and we know the ones in Russia and other places can be huge. Uh, the significance of that hasn't uh, really impacted the market, has it? No, uh, you know, all I can say is, you know, uh, not much is moving the needle in terms of the market and share prices these days. And that's, you know, across the board with junior exploration companies. Uh, however, in the last few weeks, we've seen a little bit of perk up. I would say we've found a bit of a pulse. Uh, we see the U.S. dollar, you know, turning over and it seems to be correlated with uh, with silver, you know, coming off of off of the floor there. I'm, I'm not an economist, but it seems to be the most basic understanding of, of what's going on out there. And we've seen some great uh, highlights coming out of other companies in the market with whatever it be, uh, Vizsla Silver with a big uh, financing. Um, and, you know, again, this this Pan American Silver Agnico bid for, for Yamana. It's all very positive uh, for the sector across the board. The fact there is money out there on the silings waiting to enter uh, when they get a glimpse of, of a window, but it just, we just need a little bit of continuity uh, with the price of silver to continue going. And I think um, every time uh, silver has a great day, my phone's ringing and the, the bankers are calling, the investors are calling. Uh, so it's very reactionary. So we just got to keep building in the background, keep building, keep building. But you're right. Um, they haven't put two and two together with what we have here at Hurricane, especially with that uh, copper nickel, you know, um, um, project that we're working on. When we do present it to majors, it's a real head scratcher for them. Those that know Peru, uh, uh, like some of the majors and, and and like Christian, who's operated there his entire career, uh, it's a real uh, head scratcher because no one's seen it before. And so to come across a copper nickel project like we have there, it is uh, it's mind boggling to them because, like you said, Kerry, it's formerly what you'd see in. Uh, Russia and Brazil, and these things can just span for kilometers. So uh, more geophysics is required to uncover what we could have there. Uh, but we have the attention of, of a lot of big players out there uh, on that asset. So it's it's really intriguing. And, and therefore is the paradox. I asked uh, one of your colleagues recently this question. I'm going to ask you, Peter, when you see that institutions and other major mining concerns, they have tremendous interest in in the sector and in tier one silver in particular, what are they seeing that the retail individual investor is totally overlooking and missing? Yeah, you know, I think I think it comes down to outlook and expectations. Uh, the major miners have been around for a long time. They will continue to be. So they're looking, you know, through multiple cycles ahead to see what could be future projects and what could really be economically viable. 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And in terms of these larger copper assets, sometimes 100 years out, you know, so really it's 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 expectations versus near term kind of gains in the market. We know that uh, on the retail side, it's been a rough go uh, for trading and 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 some of the, the retail investors, you know, it's just every time you think you're going to make a step ahead, you get clobbered down two steps back and it's been, it's been tough. I, I see it in my own accounts as well, not only our own oh, share price. So it's... Uh, it's it's been a rough one to take, but I think, you know, what the institutions and and the big money see is is potential for for you know as I said multiple cycles down the road that's something that's going to outlast and we know that the world needs silver it's going to need a lot more to keep up with this electrification of the world we know the world needs copper nickel all these elements are are so crucial for for the green revolution and and just you know keeping up with standard infrastructure as well so. Uh, we've got to continue to to keep building, got to continue to set the table. Uh, and and when and when it does turn on, when the switch is turned, we've seen it. We, we've all been a part of it a couple summers ago when it was quite euphoric and a and, uh, great place to be. Uh, but I think silver is going to have even more of a run than we saw uh, last time. I think it eclipses that $30 an ounce quite easily. And and uh, you know we're, we're paying the price of admission for that fun ride uh, right now. And it's painful uh, to write that check and to be there, but um, you know we're going to weather the storm and we're going to come out on top and have a phenomenal, phenomenal project to go after. 
Christian, uh, can you fill us in on Kurabaya, where where we are there, what's next uh, for that project? Yeah, for sure. In Kurabaya, we saw the we went to Kambaya area, the higher part topographically. So where we have that potential in the vertical and precious metal that is preserved, we got the sampling. We have four. What is impressive? We have four point five meters, more than a half a kilo, that is fifty meters away from the 20 meters with close to 300 grams. So mineralization is, is, it shows the regularity in mineralization. It shows that that area is the area that we need to deal. And we did there the CSMT, um, also targeting for a porphyry source. We got two very interesting anomalies that needs to be tested. Uh, we have, we are doing the relogging at the moment and we are finding different intrusives that are coming from, you know, from the, the, the depth. So we need to test that with the geophysical anomalies. So that's the relogging. So that's more sampling that we, we have done. So we have areas to drill for the porphyry target and also the structures in the Cambaya area. So what is coming next is drilling. We are relogging at the moment, but need, we need to drill that probably in the epithermal structures and also in the porphyry target for next year. All right. Well, that sounds very promising. The porphyry, I know, has been uh, on the radar screen, been pursuing it vigorously, mark it aside. Hey, Peter, I'm going to ask you to make the ultimate uh, forward-looking statement now. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not a, a, a psychic. Sounds safe, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but when you look ahead a year, okay, assume that the market has changed, not that it's taken off or gone crazy, just that it's following norms where like little things like drill results actually matter and yeah. uh, ore grades, uh, you know, unimportant things like that. But let's just yeah. say the market has returned to normal. Uh, where will tier one be and where will this sector be? Okay. So yeah, you are putting me in a spot here, but um, I will say this, and we've heard it before is when you look across the board at, at, at exploration companies, uh, all of our peers, and there's some fantastic companies out there, the potential and the what if has been wiped out of their share price. So you're getting priced in the market right now of what people have in the ground. And it's it's bare, bare bones. Sometimes it's even less than, less than that. There's some great companies uh, that have defined resources and, and uh, millions of ounces of gold or what have you in the ground, and, and they're getting nothing forward out there. So I think we see that value being added back to the stock. Uh, and then the what if and the potential uh, will come back. And that's, that's so important um, uh, in the markets that you're able to, to tell the story and can lead and to point to past successes, past mines that have been discovered and say, hey, like we think we're on the track to do this. And, and I think this looks very similar to this company over here. And I think you get a lot of value value for that back in the market. And we'll, we'll see our share price um, you know, come off this, this low here where we're sitting uh, and and hopefully get back to those those prices that we saw a year year and a half ago, right? Uh, hey, I'm a shareholder. I feel the pain just like all of you out there, uh, Christian. Uh, when you're looking at the project for the year ahead, what's your what's your biggest uh, priority? What what excites you the most from where we're looking for the coming year? Yeah, I think so. We need in the case of Curibaya, we need to. Uh, find the geometry of the structures. We have six kilometers of structures of corridors. So the Cambaya area, we're going to test now. But a year ahead, I see that we are going to define, we're going to have a better understanding of the geometry of these structures. Hopefully, we will get this source, the porphyry also. And in the case of Hurricane, also defining the geometry of these seals, these horizontal bodies that uh, we should be doing the environmental studies and also if we are lucky in the advance of the permits, we will be drilling also that project. So I see drilling, I see defining the geometry in the areas, and, let, uh, and if we hit, we can hit if we are lucky this porphyry source. All right. Well, that's definitely an exciting year ahead. Hey, I've not once considered uh, selling my shares in Tier 1 Silver. That's just my own personal uh, predisposition. Uh, I'm a believer in the company. That's why I own shares. So if you want to find out more, go over to tier1silver.com. Make sure you sign up for the notifications. Uh, I know some releases are coming up shortly. You're going to want to know about them. Ticker symbols, US, TSLVF. 
and in Canada, TSLV. Peter, Christian, thank you so much for coming on, giving us this uh, update. I'm excited and I'll look forward to the next. Thanks, Kerry. Thank you. Financial Survival Network.